Man, aka the Blue Face. My name is Fuck You. <laughs> of horror. We are horror. Fuck you. So, Horror, tell me what's new and exciting. What's going on with you guys these days? Uh, the record is out. It came out May 5th worldwide in every single store, music outlet in the world. And I would advise you to go get that motherfucker. And, and it's hard hitting. It's really loud, very loud when well, you listen to it. What's the name of the motherfucker? It's called United States of Horror. Loud. You, it, the only way to listen to this album is loud. So what, give us a couple of records that you guys were listening to while recording the record. Uh, while recording the record? Uh, well, we have a fine collection of records at our house, but the latest records I've been listening to is The Stooges, it's Iggy Pop. Uh, Body Count, the first album, Ice-T. That shit's hardcore. That's pretty solid. That shit's hardcore. The first one's good. Yeah. Ice T was uh, fucking. Ice T's <laughs> into his metal though. He yeah. was like a huge fan yeah. of. Uh, <laughs> you know, I saw him back in the day because I'm old, but I saw the Body Count tour, and he's oh, just word. like. When they were like early. He early was body count. really into Slayer and oh, Anthrax and, yeah. and all those bands. He was yeah. a huge, yeah. huge guy. We played a show with Body Count actually. They uh, they dropped their album Manslaughter, and we played their release show in New York at the Gramercy Theater with with Madball. And uh, this other band called Wisdom and Chain, but that was like a legendary show to that us. Madball, Madball is like yeah. fucking oh, yeah. legendary hardcore band, and you got Body Count. You know, it's yeah, it's pretty solid. Did did um, Body Count curate? Did Ice T like curate that show, or is yeah. it a, they like so hit cool. us up to do it? And then it, it was so amazing because like obviously he's Ice T. This guy's seen it all. He's done it all. And when we got there, after he was like sound checking when we walked in and we were watching, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe that's Ice-T. He's like really right there. And he gets off the stage and he comes and he shakes our hand. He just says hello to us. And usually as the openers, I feel like we don't get any love. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like they just, they, they just, they see you and it's like, oh, okay, we can go to the back. We didn't even get a green room. They just gave us like, like it was like it was like this back room that was just had stairs that you walk into the green room. We didn't have a green room. But I remember when we got off stage after he saw us perform, he like rushes to the to the back room and he's just like, You motherfuckers are so crazy, are so insane, and I love it. You guys should be called the ill Maddox because you're so ill. That's awesome. That's so great. <laughs> it was so, it was so tight. Quote unquote, you niggas is ill. What is your name called? We said horror, he said I'm gonna call y'all niggas the, the Illmatics. That's, that's what you Words. That's really awesome. Words from Ice T himself. So let's go back. Like, what album? Give us an album each that inspired you guys to start playing. The music you play, you know. Damn. I would say Onyx. If you know, this is this is rap group from like New York, Queens. They like was hardcore as fuck, you know. Um, the reason why I say them is because, <clears throat> obviously, in, in rap, in hip hop, you you kind of have to be like a certain way, like gangster rap. I mean, you either conscious rap or gangster rap. But these motherfuckers were only like there was like an award show, like a hip hop award show, and. <laughs> They performed this song called, uh, what's it, Throw Your Guns Up? And they literally pulled out a gun and shot this gun in the air at an award show on TV. Like, that is the most gangster shit to me. So the first album by Onyx is called Back the Fuck Up. <laughs> that's, the fuck up. that's the shit right there. That was, that was a huge hit. That was like an MTV staple. You know, that, one. Yeah. that thing, Slam, you know? It's heavy for the hood. <laughs> Bad Brains, Rock for Light. Greatest band ever to do it. Made hardcore or hardcore before it was even called hardcore. Put the dub reggae in it. Yeah, I was tired. Louder, faster, stronger, just fucking crazy momentum of energy and probably the best performer, frontman the stage has ever been fucking graced with. So that's what gave me the full inspiration and in music and in my life in general to just do this and be where I am today. So. Down, 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 down. 
album you bought? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. Actually, it was Bone Thugs in Harmony, their first, no, their second album, Eternal 1999, and I got it on a cassette tape. Nice. I was a huge fan of the video, The Crossroads. Right. And being as a kid, I didn't know about whole albums or singles, and back in that day, you can only buy the tapes with the singles. And I bought the whole whole album on cassette, and I played it in my mom's car. I think it was, I think it was like hmm. Sunday, on the way to church. That's great. And I didn't know it was the whole album. <laughs> I'm just thinking the Crossroads is gonna come right on, and then the intro came on, and it was some real heavy, <laughs> satanic, <laughs> deep voice shit. And my mother said, boy, what are you fucking listening to? <laughs> so what that tape is, we fast forwarded to the Crossroads song, and every time the song would end, we would, play it back so it can start on that and that ended up like breaking the tape and then I finally <laughs> years later I bought the CD and listened to the whole album but that was my first that was that was one of the first records that's great that's a great story I yeah. love it um, I would say the first single it was a similar situation to him as far as buying a single I, I didn't I actually didn't buy an album I, I think the first single I bought was Buster Buster Rhymes it was, um, damn, what was the song? It was probably, um, it was off the first album, uh, Woo Ha. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was like the first single that I ever, ever got. And um, it was, it, it was just crazy to me. Like, you know, just the sound. It's a catchy song. He's just a, yeah, it's, it's catchy and he's a character. Like, yeah. you know, like almost like a character, like a cartoon character, you know, with the way that he um, expresses like the words, you know? And um, yeah, that, that that was like the first, but I couldn't, my, my parents didn't let me listen to music like that. I had my own little stereo and we had cassettes and we would, when we wanted to, um, rec we would record songs off the radio, like Hot 97. I would literally wait for like, the song that I really wanted to hear and I would like just just time it spend hours all day just listening to the radio and time it and then record that song and then just make a mixtape just like a bunch of singles that's great yeah that's, that's, that's fun would. stuff though I mean that it's was, cool I, actually that <laughs> guys thanks very much for doing this are there any uh, would you like to send a message out to the internet words of wisdom uh, be bold don't be afraid. And go get that album and bump it loud. <laughs> and the name of the album again, please. United States of Horror. It's a yellow cover. You can't miss it. It's so bright that you you literally, we did it on purpose. Like, it's a yellow cover. You can't miss it. You can't. This is Fuck You reporting live from Vancouver. <laughs> Gentlemen, ladies, beautiful babies around the world, you have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.